I'm going to talk to you about organizational unit management. We will cover add an organizational unit, move users to an organizational unit, turn a service on or off for users, change service settings for different users, use groups to customize service settings, customize service settings with configuration groups. To apply different settings to a set of users or to Chrome devices, create a sub-organizational unit below your top-level organization and place them in it. You can then apply unique settings to that organizational unit. An organizational unit is simply a group that an administrator can create in the Google Admin Console to apply settings to a specific set of users. By default, all users are placed in the top-level or parent organizational unit. Child organizational units inherit the settings from the parent, but can be changed to fit the needs of the child organizational unit. To add an organizational unit, come over here to, this, to the left uh, directory, and then select organizational units. Now I'm going to create an organizational unit. So I name this contractors. And you can give it a description. And you have the option to set a parent organization unit. For the moment, I'm going to leave it at DC test domain account. And then I'm going to select create. And now you can see the contractors OU is there. If you want to move users into an organizational unit, you can do so here from the user section. So I'm going to select five users here. I'm going to select five users, tick the boxes beside them. Then I come up here to more options. And then I'm going to select change organizational unit. And I want all five of those to go to the newly created contractors all you. Click on continue. Uh, so please review the following that applies to the contractors organization. Some users may not, some services may not be turned on. The users will not be able to use the services that are not turned on. Some service level settings may change for the selected users. Are you sure you want to move the five users? And this change may take up to 24 hours to take effect. So now I'm going to click change. And now if you look at the contractors OU, and now you can see the five users are now in the contractors OU. Now I'm going to show you how to move users into an OU using a CSV file. So I've moved these five users back into the top level organizational unit. So I'm going to go here to select all the users, then I come up here to download users, and I'm going to download all user info and currently selected columns, and then click download. So that will download as a Google Sheet. And you have the option there to open it in Google Sheets. So here's one I've downloaded earlier. So what you want to do is type in contractors there. So I want to move those five users and now those five users will be moved to the contractors OU as I wanted. So I'm going to select download as a CSV, come back to the admin console, then I'm going to select bulk update users going to attach the CSV file, Just open, then I'm going to upload. So now you'll see it's processing the CSV file. And now if I come back to the contractors OU, and the five users are back in there. Now that we've created an OU and added users into it, we can control which services these users can access. So what we can do is come over here to the left hand side to apps, and then I'm gonna select Google Workspace and then service status. So now these are all the core Google Workspace services in here. So I just want to affect the users in the contractors OU. See the service status for all these services are turned on at the moment. And it says inherited here. When it says inherited, it means inherited from the top level DC test domain account. 
So I just want to affect the users here in the contractors OU. So I don't want them to access calendar. So I'm gonna select off. Calendar will be turned off for all users. And you can see here showing status and apps for contractors. I don't want them to access Google Meet. So I'm gonna turn that off. And you'll see some warnings as you're turning services off in here. And groups business off. And finally, I don't want it to access sites either. So I'm going to say off override. And when it says override, it's overriding what, what's in the top level domain, or sorry, top level org unit. So once that's done, you can see calendar is off. Google Meet is off, Groups of Business is off, and Google Sites is off. And you can see this will only affect the contractors OU. So any users I add into the contractors OU will only have access to the services that are turned on here. Now, if any user attempts to access any of the services in here that are turned off, they will see this. We are sorry, but you don't have access to Google Sites. Please contact your organization administrator for access. You can customize service settings for individual apps as well. So if I come over here again to my contractors OU, select it, and now I'm gonna restrict what they can do with Google Drive. So in here, I come into Drive and then I click on sharing settings. So I don't want anyone in the contractors OU to be able to share files externally. So you can see here in the top level org unit, it's allowed anyone in the organization can share files outside or with external people. So click on the contractors OU and you can see there files owned by contractors cannot be shared outside of TC test domain account. So I'm going to turn off external sharing so I don't want them to allow I don't want to allow them to share files outside the organization. Um, so I also don't want them to receive files from users outside of our organization. So I'm going to select that and then I'm going to select override. So now you can see if I select DC test domain account, it's on. But if I come back to contractors, it's off. So nobody in the contractors or you can share files externally. If you already use organizational units to control other settings for users, you might instead want to control service access using groups. This lets you control access to services for any group of users, no matter what your organizational structure. So if I look at my contractors or you, there's two users in here that I want to be able to access sites because they're going to be building a new website for us. So Jeremy and Stacy will be added into a group. I've already created the group. It's called Access Sites. Um, so the two users are in there. So there's Jeremy and there's Stacy. So I come back into the server status. And now I'm going to select Groups up here. And now I'm going to type in Access... Uh, so sites I'm going to turn on. So sites will be turned on for all users and access sites. So turn it on. So sites is now on for access groups. So Jeremy and Stacy will now have access to sites. This is very handy if you want to control access to services without changing the organizational structure. The last thing I want to show you is configuration groups. Uh, with configuration groups, you can customize service settings for a group of users. Um, so I've created a group uh, called External Calendar Sharing. There's two members in here. There's, you can see the two members there. Um, so what I want to do is allow them to be able to share their calendars externally. Um, I've created the group. So on the top level org unit, the external sharing options for your primary calendars are free, busy information only. So I want to allow these two users within the group to be able to share all information. So if I come over here and I search for the group and then I say external calendar sharing. So with the external calendar sharing for these two users, I want to share all information 
and outsiders can change calendars so i click save so now the two users in external calendar sharing can share all information on their calendars and will only affect those two users within the group